Well, we have our 27th wedding anniversary this coming October, and, uh, and I still love her just like I did then. In fact, I love her more because of all that we've gone through and how she has st stayed in there through thick and thin and um, the hard times. You know, I still loved her even in those hard times, even though I was the source of most of the problems, but I loved her. And I, I'm just, I'm not lost without her today, but I, I feel, I, I feel off balance because she's not here. I love serving the Lord with her. She prays. <laughs> and uh, I just, I love her. And you know what? I listen to her. Because she's usually right. <laughs> she's got common sense and she's level-headed. And I'm up like this and I'm down and I'm starting to learn to be a little more on, on, on the even keel. But uh, isn't it true God puts opposites together? Doesn't he? Well, you know, he puts opposites together in the spiritual realm, too, doesn't he? Because we're nothing like the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the complete, exact opposite. But God loves us so much that he draws us together. And he said, if I lift my son up, I will draw all men unto him. Listen to Jesus. It has been said that the Bible is a corridor between two eternities down which walks the Christ of God. His invisible steps echo through the Old Testament, but we meet him face to face in the throne room of the New Testament. And it is through that Christ alone, crucified for me, that I have found forgiveness for sins and life eternal. The Old Testament is summed up in the word Christ. The New Testament is summed up in the word Jesus. And the summary of the whole Bible is that Jesus is the Born in the East and clothed in Oriental form and imagery, Jesus walks the ways of all the world with familiar feet and enters land after land to find his own everywhere. He speaks in hundreds of languages to the heart of man. He comes into the palace to tell the monarch that he is a servant of the Most High. He comes into the cottage to assure the peasant that he is a son of God. Children listen to his stories with wonder and delight, and wise men ponder them as parables of life. He has a word of peace for the time of peril, a word of comfort for the time of calamity, a word of light for the hour of darkness. His oracles are repeated in the assembly of the people, and his counsels whispered in the ear of the lonely. The wicked and the proud tremble at his warnings, but to the wounded and the penitent, he has a mother's voice. The wilderness and the solitary place have been made glad by him, and the fire on the hearth has lit the reading of him. He has woven himself into our dearest dreams so that love, friendship, sympathy, and devotion, memory, and hope put on the beautiful garments of his treasured speech, breathing of frankincense and myrrh. Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Don't make no mistake about it. Socrates taught for 40 years, and Plato taught for 50 years. Aristotle taught for 40, and Jesus for only three years. Yet the influence of Jesus' three-year ministry infinitely transcends the impact left by the combined 130 years of teaching from these men who are considered the greatest philosophers of all antiquity. Jesus painted no pictures, yet some of the finest paintings of Raphael, Michelangelo, and Leonardo da Vinci received their inspiration from him. Jesus wrote no poetry, but Dante, Milton, and scores of the world's greatest poets were inspired by him. Jesus composed no music, yet Hayden, Handel, Beethoven, Bach, and Mendelssohn reached their highest perfection of melody in the hymns, symphonies, and oratories they composed to his praise. Every sphere of human greatness has been enriched by this humble carpenter of Nazareth. It's all about Jesus. Jesus is the mind of, listen to this, Jesus is the mind of God. He is the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the the happiness of believers. His teachings are holy. His precepts are binding. His history is true. And his decisions are unchangeable. 
Read about Him if you want to be wise. Believe in Him if you want to be safe. Follow Him if you want to be holy. He is the light which will direct you. He is the food to support you. And He is comfort to cheer you. Jesus is the traveler's map. He's the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, and the soldier's sword, and the Christian's character. In Him, paradise is restored, and heaven is opened, and the gates of hell are disclosed. Jesus is God's grand subject, and our good is His design, and the glory of God is His end. Jesus should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read about Jesus and read about Him slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. For Jesus is a mine of wealth. He is a paradise of glory. He is a river of pleasure. Follow Jesus and He will lead you to Calvary, to the empty tomb, to a resurrected life for all eternity. Amen. Right? All God's people said. Amen. It's all about Jesus. In a letter that was written to the Roman Senate back when Jesus was during his earthly ministry, a description of Jesus was imprinted in this letter that was read to the Roman Senate. It says this, There appeared in these days a man of great virtue named Jesus Christ, who is yet among us today. Of the Gentiles, he is accepted as a prophet of truth, but his disciples call him the Son of God. He raises the dead and cures all manners of disease. A man of stature, somewhat tall and comely, with a very reverend countenance, such as the beholder must both love and fear. His hair, the color of a chestnut, full and ripe, plain to the ears, yet downward. It is more orient, curling and waving about his shoulders. In the midst of his forehead is a stream or a partition of his, of his hair after the manner of the Nazarites. His forehead is plain and very delicate. His face without spot or wrinkle, beautiful with a lovely red about his skin. His nose and mouth so forked as nothing can be represented by it. His beard is thick in color like his hair, not too long. His look is innocent and mature. His eye is gray, quick, and clear. In reproving, he is terrible. In admonishing, he's courteous and fair-spoken, pleasant in conversation, mixed with gravity. It cannot be remembered that any have ever seen him laugh, but many have seen him weep. In proportion of body, most excellent. His hands and arms delectable to behold. In speaking, he's very temperate. He's modest and wise. A man of singular beauty, surpassing the children of men. It's all about Jesus. Do you love him today? I would like you to turn to the Old Testament book of Psalms. And I would like you to turn to Psalm 119. We're going to get a picture of Jesus that we've probably never seen before. At least I haven't until I thought about this. What is it about Jesus? There's something about him. Psalm 119. Now we know from the Word of God in John chapter 1 that Jesus is declared to be the Word of God. The Logos. He is the living Word of God. The personification of every word from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 is all about Jesus. He is the Word. Do you agree with that? Psalm 119 is a psalm with 176 verses. All but four verses say something about the Word of God. So that tells me that 172 verses say something about Jesus, who is the living Word of God, the personification of the Word of God. So let's see what picture Psalm 119 paints about Jesus. 